And it raised this debate around um, what's called instrumental usage on the one hand and social use on the other. So instrumental use essentially just means a, a use that has a productive purpose and then social or relationship use. And generally they saw in the three regions that relationship use was considered a greater benefit than instrumental use. But that led to a, a lot of thinking about, are these things mutually exclusive? In, de in the developing world context, especially amongst the poor, they're actually, it's not dichotomous. They're intrinsically linked, these two things. So to a large extent, if you want a loan or if you want to uh, build a business, you'll be working with your family and friends. So actually those two things are, are not different. I guess at the beginning, our hypothesis was that they somehow it would help them increase their income, that it had real instrumental uses. Um, the first finding was that the uses were to call family and friends. Of course, once you get a little bit into it, what you saw behind that was that many of these family and friends were, were also related to a, a business, of either a family business or, or close-knit of, of social relationships. One thing that happened is most of our fi findings in, I mean, in most of the countries was that women used it more than men. Um, that may have to do with the fact that uh, the interviews were done during the day and, and men were there, so, so they got to say what they wanted. So you have the Indo-Gangetic Plain, uh, which is you know, the world's largest concentration of poor people, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh. Now we've done uh, three samples that are representative of the bottom of the pyramid, uh, 2011, 2008, and 2006. So in all these, the pattern continues to hold, which is in the Indo-Gangetic Plain, more men than women have phones, though the gap is narrowing. In the Philippines and Thailand, we found more women had mobile phones than men, and they were even putting tracking uh, software on their husband's phones to figure out where, where they were at a given point in time. We had a man called Zayed Khan, I guess that's not his real name, from Bangladesh, a, retail, a retailer, a small grocer, and he talks about having to close his shop to go bring the, gross, bring the supplies. And he no longer has to do it because he now calls. And the suppliers come to his shop and they deliver to him. So you can clearly see those, those sort of the tra travel transport related issues playing out on the economic side. The first study looked at how the SMEs are using ICTs to enhance their economic activities. And we found out that mobile telephones were contributing positively towards their profitability. Then we also looked at the use of mobile phones by small and medium enterprises in Ghana. And we came across the fact that it has become very pervasive technology. It's no more for only for communication, but for also for business purposes. For example, we, we found out that the use of mobile phones was increasing access to market for the small operators in the rural areas. We're quite interested in the agricultural area. And again, rather surprising data about you know, farmers, smallholders not being very interested in market price information. Uh, it's not they're uninterested, but they're not, it's not at the top of their list. They're more interested about availability of inputs, prices of inputs, availability, location of buyers, etc. So trading platforms they're interested in simply spot market information they're not that interested in. 